Now what else have we got? Okay, section one. Ah, now this one looks more promising. This one doesn't have nice straight edges which line up. This has nice bulbous edges. Which means if you were to take an extraction of that and place it on another one, let's say here, it doesn't matter if it lines up perfectly because the bulbous nature of the rock means it's not supposed to. And if you have gaps like that, you just move them overlapping until you eat the gaps away. And there you go. This may be what we're looking for. So let's try that. Go up here so I can see what I'm doing. In fact, we may not even need that entrance with that. So I'll move that away for now. And I'll get this guy. I'll rotate him. Oh, G. This will be easier. From G. Rotate it to roughly match the um, direction of my cave. Um, you can only rotate one direction, so you just got to keep... There we go. Now, it's my biggest concern at this point is that my walls will be smaller than the cave hunt entrance so they'll poke through the sides but it gives me a nice roof hmm. okay we bring them out a bit rotate it using this way I should have done that originally it's easier hmm. bring it down a bit it's much too high uh, down and across yeah okay this is a good tunnel that's still the best entrance so I'll bring him back I'll push that back in as you might have gathered um, at this point this is a very organic design process there's no um, preset list of things I'm doing and checking them off as I go I'm literally just using what I find how I want to use it it's in a very organic process but it doesn't lend itself to um, that one two three steps it's kind of like I want to do this I'll have a go at this that didn't work I'll try this it didn't work I'll try this it did work so now thanks to that process we have a very nice looking cave inside of which we have a very nice looking roof hopefully the play can still get through into a very open but will at one point be a nice looking cave so it's at this point I'd like to check what that looks like for the player um, just to make sure that there's no unusual defects so if I test game I can get a player's eye view because um, the main reason to do this is scale or the player exists when the player exists in the world he exists to a certain scale which is not instantly apparent when editing from the top down view or the freeform view to actually be the player is the only way how to get a good get a good look at scale so come through here and we're, once where I thought the tunnel map a bit narrow is huge there's plenty of room for the player and he comes out into the cave so the next step would be to build up on this and create a roof and the top of the wall for this cave so Let's have a look at what I had. Um, rock sections one and two, and vertical rock cliff. Let's have a look what those look like. Rock section one, rock section two, vertical rock cliff. Oh, it's tiny. It's tiny with no background vertex vertices. I'm not fond of things like that. Um, I like things that can be used from every angle. Um, this is really good for 
performance because you never want your player to see the back of the rock therefore why create it and why render it but it doesn't lend itself to versatility so I'll get rid of that I like these rocks here um, I assume they've got no underside oh they do have an underside that's good um, well let's use them I'm not going to use the underside it's just uh, for sure it's not with texture proper uh, right so we'll take him and bring him over here um, ah, when you see a bounding box like this it means that the majority of the um, entity is under the ground level and so it's alerting you that this can't be seen it doesn't consider the fact that the cleft in here it's mostly percentage wise under the ground and so it's letting you know that this thing's in the ground it can't be seen especially useful in moving things on the main map over large distances um, not so much when you're trying to build a cave so just bring it over here and drop it down a little now I want to get it on top of that cave lip um, to form the start of my wall without it cutting through the underside of it okay so that's what I'm trying to do now so I use my little widget tool to move it in small increments um, to create a nice um, transition I suppose the word uh, now what it's okay to have them bulbousy rocks poking through because rocks are uneven by nature um, like this but I don't want them to look odd so I'd rather have them all out like that than like a pokey bit like that so let's have a look at this it's not poking through um, because when this is dark and dimly illuminated you can be forgiven for some things but never for that never for that so let's move it up a bit I'm back good good I like that okay so if I come up again you'll notice a lot of this um, if I want to move my cursor up I'll point down and hold the S key to move backwards um, I like to float around in free view mode rather than jump to top-down view um, I find it slightly disorientating others swear by it others love top-down mode personally prefer free view um, I get more of an eye on the entire scene rather than one view I can see everything from every angle at different angles and so if there's an issue I'm more likely to see it during the creation process rather than the testing process uh, when it's often too late to do anything about it uh, from an artistic point of view um, now we're going to use this one because it's got a slightly different texture arrangement to do this I like that already um, completely blends in that's really good um, yeah okay that's good I just wanted to fill in the top of that because I'm going to have uh, rocks on the roof as a kind of uh, a natural cave and so I wanted it Colored not there, so I didn't have any gaps. Um, not that it would matter, the player would have a hard time getting up there, but you know what they say about players, you can't trust them to stay where you put them. 